Hi, my name is Jen, and I wanted to talk about an anime convention that I went to at the beginning of May. Um, I went to Anime Fan Fest in New Jersey, which was May 6th through the 8th. Uh, it was in Somerset, New Jersey. It's actually where um, kind of a bigger convention, Anime Next, is usually hosted. Uh, this year, A Next actually moved to Atlantic City, so in response, Otaku USA, which is a, an anime magazine here, uh, decided to host uh, a smaller event in that venue just to kind of fill that void. Um, for me, it was much appreciated because I've been going to Anime Next for 10 years. I started, yeah, 2006. And the move to Atlantic City was just a, a little bit out of my, my price range and whatnot, so I decided to give Anime Fan Fest a try, and I really loved it. It just had that great, again, it was a new con, so it had that great, like, little community kind of feel to it. Um, they had a surprisingly impressive, like, amount of guests and panels and whatnot, and uh, the exhibition hall was great, the artist alley was great as well. Uh, it was probably not even a quarter of the size of Anime Next, but again, for for what it was, it was definitely just a fun weekend. A couple of the panels I went to, uh, I went to one called Anime Literary Classics, which was really interesting. Uh, it was, uh, you know, to be honest, I wish the guy who hosted it went a little bit more in-depth about maybe some of the historical context um, of some of the shows or some of the literary classics that the shows were based off of. It was more him kind of just showing us clips of certain shows and kind of briefly introducing them. Um, so like a little bit more context would have been nice, but it was still really cool to see like a Romeo and Juliet anime and kind of, you know, I jotted down a bunch of them um, that I would really love to check out. Sherlock Hound, which is uh, Sherlock Holmes kind of spin-off that was actually done by Hayao Miyazaki. It's uh, really old and it looks really cute. It's all anthropomorphic animals. Uh, it's streaming on Crunchyroll, so I have to start looking into that. Another one that I went to that I really loved was a panel by a guy named Charles Dunbar, and it was called uh, The First Anime, and it was basically just a, an overview of kind of the history of animation in Japan, uh, which was fascinating because, you know, he talked a little bit about magic lanterns and just some really early things and kind of, um, you know, earlier proper pencil to paper camera animation, you know, the Disney influence, you know, going through Tezuka and all the big names. Toy animation is a pretty old one as well. Um, he also, I didn't go to this one, uh, but I think I've gone to it actually. I think I went to it a couple years ago at Anime Next, I don't quite remember, but um, he has a, a Hayao Miyazaki panel that is really good, and he has these little little booklets that he publishes about it, so I picked one of those up. Um, it was only five dollars and it's just like text-heavy Miyazaki writing because, um, you know, he does a lot of research into this. I think he was an anthropology major in school, so he kind of just focuses on animation in Japan. Um, and it's really interesting, and I really am envious that he does this because it's so cool that he just travels to conventions and just, like, gets to tell people. And he's also such a great like orator like he was such a great storyteller he made it really interesting it's kind of just everything you want when you're learning about like you know an interesting topic in history so definitely I'm happy to support him and his little his publications another panel that I went to was an indie game developers one and it wasn't quite what I expected but I don't even mean that in a bad way um, again I kind of was expecting like a small studio that does like phone apps or something but it ended up being this team that is trying to port um, a really old game and kind of bring the assets and kind of bring it over so that it's accessible to people today. Um, it's called, I have like a DVD ROM 20th anniversary edition. It's uh, the Journeyman Project, Pegasus Prime. They gave everybody like a kind of complimentary one and it, it was really interesting just hearing their story about like how they got involved in this project and this game I had honestly never heard of this game before this panel um, so again I think some people were a little bit um, confused because it wasn't quite like I guess what you would think of like an indie game panel um, so much as it was just these guys kind of working on this almost archiving project or like porting yeah as I said it was like a porting project that was really interesting some of the stuff that I got at the con were just, just little things I picked up. I got a couple of volumes of uh, Kodocha, 
which I think I now have every single, it's a 10 volume series, it's a shoujo. It was really popular when I was in like 6th, 7th, 8th grade, so kind of a while ago. Um, and yeah, it's about this child actress named Sana, and kind of about like the hijinks that she gets into and like growing up and you know, there's a spot of romance and whatnot. But like it's one of those series where I have a couple of them and I always just wanted the whole set and so I just grabbed a couple of these because it was like two for ten or something like that, which was a great deal. Something else I got there was this beautiful, very subtle Dragon Ball print, Dragon Ball Z print. And you can, if you don't even know that it's Goku and Chi Chi and like little Gohan chill in there, like a normal person would just see it and be like, oh, that's, that's a really cool illustration. This is by a woman named Janet Sung, who works as an illustration teacher, and she also obviously just does freelance. Um, and I saw it, when I first went there, I, I had my eye on a Yu Yu Hakusho print, but then I saw this, and again, it's just, I love, um, I love like subtle fan, fan pieces. Like I love prints where like you kind of need to know what you're looking at to know what series it's from. So I was so happy to find this. I have to get it framed because I like to frame my art. The last thing that I got there was a bunch of Digimon stuff because I'm a giant fan of Digimon. I hate blind boxes, but I got a bunch of Digimon blind boxes. And in hindsight, I should have just bought, they had um, these series of Digimon blind boxes and it was eight in a set. So there was this booth there um, called Figure Eyes and it's figureeyes.com. Um, they also have a separate company called Gundam Planet, GundamPlanet.com, and they specialize in like garage kits, model kits, paint tools, and things like that that you need. Um, they also sell just different figurines and different types of characters and figures. I got a couple of blind boxes from two different Digimon sets. I got, um, there's a Data 1 set and there's a Data 2 set, and each set comes with four of the rookie Digimon and then um, sets that come with one in training and one baby Digimon. If you don't know the show, then you don't really know what I'm talking about. It's just the combinations that you could possibly pull um, vary. So I was pretty indifferent to whichever ones I got. The only one I knew I wanted the most was Garomon, who is this little white cat on the cover, um, which I actually got the first one I did. Um, of the 16 boxes, I bought four. Uh, I kind of just feel like I should have just bought like a whole case just to get the entire set. And the people at the booth were freaking lovely as hell and they put up with me shaking the boxes like a crazy person trying to find the one that I wanted and I found her and she is beautiful. They have a store in uh, northern Jersey um, which is my home state so when I was passing through I decided to pit stop in there and I actually picked up another figure. I haven't opened her yet but I picked up the Kari and Gatomon set so it comes with both of them and this is what they look like and it was beautiful and I, I really recommend the store. They were very nice. It's a small warehouse. You kind of feel like you're gonna get jumped because it's kind of just like around the corner and like it's like very, it's kind of hard to find because it's kind of in like the basement of a building. Uh, but it was really cool. They had all the figures out on display and again the people there were very lovely. Um, so yeah, I purchased this one on at the physical store. I already went onto the website and I ordered one of the entire boxes and I pre-ordered another Digimon figurine that's coming out. They're releasing a Rika and Renamon from Digimon Tamers, which is the third season here in America. Um, which, like, Renamon is my favorite. Don't Google her because the internet has done really fucked up things to her, to be honest. But yeah, the characters I got were... I got my favorite from the first two seasons, Garomon. There's this little white cat. And I got this combo of Poyomon and a sleeping Tokomon. 
what becomes Patamon if you are familiar with the show. But uh, yeah, that was my anime fan fest story. Uh, I'm definitely interested in going next year. Um, I might also try to go to anime next at some point if I now I know enough to kind of save up. But uh, I definitely recommend anime fan fest because it was adorable and it was so much fun and it was you know it's still the same people who just want to be a part of the community. So definitely check that out. Thank you.